burn. How's it going everyone? This is Trixie Meta Smash, and in this video I want to talk about attack options and counterplay. Smash Ultimate can be broken down similarly to a traditional fighting game where you have different attack zones that you can cover. In the case of Tekken, you typically have highs, mids, and lows. There are several different moves that can accomplish covering these areas, but these are the zones that a player needs to worry about. And so you might be asking, how can I possibly apply this to Smash Ultimate when this game is so free-flowing and there are so many different moves? I'll admit this is definitely one of the hardest videos that I've ever had to make and one of the hardest questions I've ever had to answer as a coach. Mainly this is because there are multiple moves that can break these rules and can be classified as basically anything depending on how you want to use it. So instead of fixating on the move itself, we're going to be classifying moves based on the space that they cover. And as you've been watching this demonstration, you will have noticed that I've classified rising aerials as highs, short hop landing aerials as mids, and tilts as lows. And even within those categories, there are even more subcategories, such as anti-airs. And like I had mentioned before, up tilt would be one of those rule breaking moves. Another way to counterattack a rising aerial is to utilize your crouch. This can allow you to set up for anti-airs by first low profiling your opponent without trapping yourself in shield. But just like trying to catch somebody high in Tekken, low profiling in Smash Ultimate using a crouch is a huge callout. Callouts like these can be made by having a strong read on your opponent and anticipating a particular approach. If you notice that your opponent is low profiling your attacks, whether they're crouching or using a short character, you may want to use landing aerials to counterplay their counterplay. And at this point, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, okay, this is all good and well, but which type of move beats each type of move? Or if I find myself trading with my opponent's character consistently, how do I win more trades? Or better yet, how do I beat them out so that my move lands before theirs gets a chance to? So just before we get into that, I want to explain that yes, there are ways to make sure that your move is the move that lands rather than hoping that you just press the button a fraction of a second faster than your opponent and hope that you get your attack out first. I want to take you guys through a small step-by-step -step simulation of how counterplay might unfold. Let's say your opponent is covering the ground with low sweeping attacks. Landing a late landing aerial on top of them would be the proper counterplay. Their next step would be a high or a rising aerial to try and catch you early. Then the counterplay to the rising aerial would be to low profile and punish or anti-air. And then finally, we have a late landing aerial to punish an anti-air. But I say finally in quotations because we all know that Smash is not quite that simple because of course, we also have access to full hops and double jumps. Full hop aerials are designed to call out an opponent who is full hopping too much and most other options won't punish full hops. That's why we also have aerial anti-airs. Aerial anti-airs are typically going to be rising short hop up airs. These are amazing tools to use against characters that like to do rising full hop back airs like Sephiroth or full hop landing nares like Ike. Beating them to the punch and punishing them before they get the chance to develop their setup. Let's take a look at even more examples of how a game could develop. First, we have Joker being stuffed out by a mid and then trying to approach using a low or grounded attack in his down tilt. And that can also be counterplayed by angling down Sephiroth's forward tilt to also cover the ground. In anticipation of Sephiroth covering the ground, Joker can come over the top with a high rising aerial to catch his tall frame. Now Sephiroth can call out Joker's jump with an up angled forward tilt. Up angled forward tilt also shares the same properties as a short hop rising fair, which would also work. Joker can now use a full hop aerial to counterplay Sephiroth covering the space with either a forward tilt or the short hop fair. And then lastly, Sephiroth has his up tilt, which can now counterplay a full hop aerial. I really hope this video helped you grasp the concept of highs, lows, and mids within the realm of Smash Ultimate. Of course, it is a very, very free flowing and different game from a traditional fighter, but the concepts do transfer over pretty amazingly. If you're interested in getting better at pressuring platforms, check out this video right here. 